Liverpool have finally got their first win of 2023 after they beat Wolverhampton Wanderers and qualified for the next round of the FA Cup. In today's video, we'll discuss the five things we learned from the match, whilst also going over some Liverpool takeover news that has been released by The Athletic. Not only that, we'll also go through the latest Liverpool news from the last 24 hours. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. Before we get into today's video, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. The Reds secured progress to the fourth round of the FA Cup at the second time of asking as Harvey Elliott's long ranger earned a 1-0 win over Wolves at Molyneux. It set up another away clash with Brighton days after the 3-0 defeat in the Premier League that sparked an inquest. Liverpool will now play the informed Brighton side at the Amex on Sunday, January 29th, with kickoff being at 1.30 GMT time and broadcasted on ITV. That fixture lands between meetings with Chelsea at home on January 21st and Wolverhampton Wanderers away on February 4th in the Premier League. There is still a chance though that one of those postponed games against the same two sides could be rescheduled in the midweek beforehand. Jurgen Klopp's side have only won once in their last six clashes with Brighton, that being a 2-0 victory at the Amex in March 2022. Just a quick one guys before we get back into the video, I just want to let you know that we're having a January sale over at our website for all our Liverpool merchandise on copikeclothing.com. The link is down there in the description. We have some new pieces coming out in February, but until then, go have a look at the old collection. As I said, it's on copikeclothing.com or down into the link in the description. Thank you. Let's get back into the video. Liverpool owners Fenway Sports Group are increasingly likely to sell a minority stake in the club rather than sanction a full takeover. We revealed in November that FSG were seeking new investment and were open to offers with US banks Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley sounding out interest. However, two months on, the Boston-based group, who have owned Liverpool since October 2010, have yet to receive any attractive proposals. Senior FSG sources have dismissed recent speculation that they are on the brink of selling Liverpool to a Qatari consortium or anyone else. No discussions at an advanced stage. Their current preference is to sell a small portion of the club, but they insist that nothing is imminent on that front and that is according to The Athletic. FSG bought Liverpool for £300 million over 12 years ago and it's now valued in the excess of £3 billion. It remains to be seen if a bid is tabled that alters their plan to retain a major shareholding. Liverpool fans have moaned and made plenty of noise in the lead up to the game last night, but the Reds continued their defence of the FA Cup title by coming through a tough tie with Wolves. Elliott opened the scoring in the 13th minute, carrying the ball forward unchallenged, before letting rip with a shot from distance which gave Jose Sarr no chance. The home team did grow in the match as it went on, but Klopp's men had enough to finish the job. In this part of the video, we'll discuss the five things we learned, with Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Liverpool 1. Changes Given recent results, there was an obvious element of tension in the air pre-game for Reds fans, though it was worth pointing out that they got an early release thanks to Harvey Elliott's screamer. Before that though, Jurgen Klopp's habit of switching it up for cups was on show, with eight changes able to be taken as a sign of rotation due to fatigue or opportunities for others after a truly awful weekend showing. Goalkeeper, both fullbacks, the spine of the team and the flanks all showed alterations, a mix of fringe players and youth into the lineup. Joe Gomez can perhaps feel he did enough to earn another go as Canate's partner, while Elliot might hope his impact is the same higher up the field. As for most of the rest, while we witnessed some nice touches or instances of effort, was there really enough on show to suggest that they could be the answer to our needs? Then again, perhaps attitude alone is the improvement enough after most recent poor results. Come full time, relief was very much apparent after the Reds were made to sweat. Bishesic, what a performance. Stefan Bishesic only boosted his reputation further with a standout display against Wolves, with Jurgen Klopp saying the door is open for everybody. Bishesic made his third start for Liverpool's first team as one of the eight players to come into the side at Molyneux and produced a composed display as the number six. The 18-year-old is emerging as a favourite among fans and among Klopp and his coaching staff alike, 
which comes at a time when the likes of Fabinho and Jordan Henderson have been struggling. With the manager criticising his players for failing to win their challenges in the initial 2-2 draw of Wolves and the 3-0 loss at Brighton, his praise for Bezhesic was telling. He said, good boy, good player, very smart in his movements. The younger you are, the more important it is that you have a good start in the game. He had a few situations, I'm not sure if he saw that he had space or just hoped that he had space. When he turned and there was actually space, he just did really well. What helps then, really, is when he wins those challenges, the last few steps before he blocks the ball, that's really good. And of course, having Thiago next to him, I think, is pretty helpful. Elliot lights things up. Harvey Elliott hasn't always been used in an advanced role by Klopp, but that's what happened at Molyneux with Mohamed Salah, rested, and Darwin Nunes, Roberto Firmino, Diego Jota, and Luis Diaz all unavailable. The goal was Elliott's fourth of the season, with three of those coming away from Anfield. It has a strong case for being his best in Liverpool red as well, and helped light up the first half, which literally had been plunged into darkness with an early floodlight issue. In a game of few big chances, it needed something special to settle the tie. Were it not for Elliot's effort, it felt like the two teams could have played for hours without scoring. Kelleher staking a claim. Allison is arguably the best goalkeeper in the world, and in no way am I insinuating that Kelleher would ever be the number one over him. I'm just saying he's very reliable as a backup and could certainly be playing as a number one in the Premier League. Kelleher impressed in last season's run to League Cup glory and has been able to understudy to his more senior colleague. There was a fingertip save to deny Ruben Neves, showing the Irish international can keep his concentration even when he's not been kept particularly busy. Liverpool will need to add reinforcements if they want to win the cup. While there is no doubt the Reds have multiple young prospects among their ranks ready to break onto the big stage, they also need strengthening in key positions. With injuries and age catching up to our once world-beating squad, Liverpool are in desperate need of one or two additions in the midfield and the attack. While Liverpool were slightly fortunate they came up against a Wolves side struggling to score goals, this will not be the case in latter rounds of the FA Cup or other competitions. With just under two weeks left of the January transfer window to shut, Klopp will need to rack his brains and hopefully recruit some players. The Reds played Chelsea at the weekend, a huge game at any point, but more so given the utterly abject form of both clubs right now. Klopp's big decision will be how much to stick and twist, how many times he can be let down by familiar faces, before going in search of something new, something more exciting, something with long-term potential. A few are naturally going to start regardless of anything that happened last night, Alisson, Mohamed Salah, Darwin Nunes if he's fit, but for more positions which are closer between potential starters, the hope must be Klopp lays down a marker for those who have been disappointed. Chelsea have plenty of their own problems and Liverpool have to make most of that, get back to winning ways in the league and step by step try to recover the season which has so far been a total bust. This match, this result, had to be about making enough noise to show we're on our path to enjoying ourselves once again. Perhaps we didn't achieve that tremendously in graphic fashion, but when desperation takes over, nobody should be embarrassed to admit they'll take whatever is on offer from time to time. Last night, Liverpool got what they wanted, is back to winning ways, even if the finish was more nervous than we were used to it being. Liverpool fans, what do you make of the takeover update? And do you see us beating Chelsea over the weekend? Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video, guys. Please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. We're also having a January sale on all our Liverpool merchandise, so do shop the collection by going over to copyclothing.com or going down into the link in the description. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.